Today's children are expected to have shorter lives than their parents. Researchers have suggested a number of reasons why this is the case, but the chief suspect? Obesity. How are we going to fix this? It's a serious problem that needs a serious solution. So you want to know my serious solution? We need to play more. But I mean the get active, get moving kind of play. Active play is critical for a child's healthy development. Play is how children get their physical activity. The other day, I told my three-year-old nephew that I was going to go work out at the gym. His response? Oh, the jungle gym! That's how kids see their world, through fun and games and play. But today's kids aren't getting enough active play. They spend seven to eight hours every day in front of a screen. They're not active enough, and it's starting to affect their health. So what if I told you that inside of most American households, there's a tool that can help children think smarter, react faster, and move more. This tool has been scientifically supported to help children lose weight, become more physically active, and interact more with their friends and family members. Sounds great, right? You're probably thinking, what is this magical tool? I'm a research scientist at Louisiana State University's Pennington Biomedical Research Center, and I've spent my career testing this tool to see, can it influence a child's level and duration of physical activity as a way to combat obesity? My research is a lot of fun, and I'm going to tell you a bit about it. So let's get back to that tool. Not only is it in most American households, but it crosses income lines. And in fact, one quarter of homes below the poverty line have this tool in them. Now, it gets a bad rap. People blame it for causing obesity. They call it a lazy pastime or a thumb workout. But there's actually no scientific evidence to show that this tool causes weight gain or reduces physical activity. So what does the research show? That this tool could actually be used to promote healthy lifestyles. All right, enough suspense. Let's cut to the chase. What is this grand tool? It's none other than the video game console. That's right, guys. I research video games. Hey, kids, a scientist is telling your parents to get you to play video games. Now that is cool. Active play is critical for a child to develop physical activity behaviors, but kids spend half of their waking hours every day in front of a screen. So I want to know, rather than blame those screens, how can we leverage that technology to get kids to be more physically active? So how do we take the digital devices that kids are already using, the computer games and video games, electronic toys, iPads, smartphones, tablets, and get kids to move more. Exer games are video games where you have to move your arms and your legs in order to play the game. So the more you move, the more points you earn, the more likely you are to win the game. Researchers have shown that playing these Exer games reaches levels of moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity. So you play the game, your heart starts beating faster, you work up a sweat, and that's exactly the intensity of physical activity we want every child to get for at least one hour every single day. So why is physical activity so important? Low levels of physical activity contribute to 9% of deaths around the world. That's 5.3 million people dying every year because they're not physically active enough. So by not being active, we're setting our kids up for a lifetime of poor health. These exer games may be part of the solution to get kids to be more active, but there's a twist. There's a critical component missing. 
What I noticed in my early research studies is that when we give kids a partner to compete against, they burned more calories playing these extra games than the kids who played the games alone. And in fact, the kids who had a partner to compete against burned as many calories playing a tennis exer game as they did playing tennis on a tennis court. Now that's interesting. To test this notion further, we did two more research experiments, and we thought, rather than give kids a partner to compete against, what if we give them a teammate? So they're working together to try to earn points, burn calories, and win the game. And we found when adolescents had a teammate, they showed better health outcomes and health behaviors. They lost weight. They improved their self-confidence and self-esteem more than those kids who didn't have a teammate. So let's think of an example related to you and me. Let's say I give you a treadmill for your birthday present. Wow, Amanda, a treadmill for my birthday you shouldn't have. Just go along with me. <laughs> I am a health researcher after all. I give you a treadmill, but I don't give you any kind of instructions or support. So I don't say, why don't you put that treadmill in your living room so you see it every day? Or why don't you start at 10 minutes a day on your treadmill and work your way up? And I don't check in with you. I don't say, how's it going on that treadmill? Keep up the good work. That treadmill becomes a place to hang your clothes. It's the same with these Xer games. We found when we give kids the game, the game alone isn't sufficient to change their physical activity behavior. They need that structure and support. So then I thought, let's kick it up a notch. Let's say a kid doesn't have a teammate or a partner to play with. What if we give that kid a book of Xer gaming challenges to provide some structure to their play and some ongoing motivation? Better yet, Let's give them a fitness coach. But that coach isn't going to go out to the child's home to play the game with the child. When the child turns on their Xer game, they'll see their fitness coach on the screen. And the coach will say, hey, how are you doing today? What do you do for your one hour of physical activity? How's your gameplay going? You know, you're doing a really good job. I'm really proud of you. Thanks to funding from the American Heart Association and the National Institutes of Health, we are testing this type of virtual social support to see, can it get kids to be more active? And importantly, is it enough to keep them active? But even if we find that digital play coupled with social support can get kids to be more active, we cannot afford to become complacent. And when I think about the estimate that today's kids will have shorter lives than their parents, complacency is the furthest thing from my mind. We can and we must do better for our children. Our children. Full disclosure, I don't have children. I'm not a parent yet, but I am passionate about children's health. I've got three precious nephews who are smart and spunky, and I want them to grow up with healthy bodies and healthy minds so they can achieve whatever they want to achieve. But I know that they're growing up in a world surrounded by screens, so rather than blame those screens, let's figure out a way to make technology work with us and for us so we can be more physically active. Let's play to a child's interests and join them on their virtual playing field. But at the same time, let's not forget the power of an authentic person to provide ongoing support and encouragement. So grab a video game and a friend and go play. Thank you.